I'm always so excited to be together with all of you. And uh, Spirit has been pretty active. I work with a team of guides and they're, they're very vocal about what they think. And so I'm going to share a little bit of, of their thoughts. And, you know, they're so, so very fortunate. Uh, most of us are star children here. We're on our mission. This is this is what we charted for, believe it or not. And so here we are in the middle of the journey and coming together like this is one of the most empowering things that we can do. We're all feeding the sacred grid. And when you wear the gemstones, you're increasing your frequency. And of course, when you increase your frequency, you're putting more energy into the grid. You know, when we talk about the grid, it was so fascinating to me many years ago at a, a sacred activation with our Hindu high priest in Bali. Um, we were at an activation where the high priest was blessing the stones and my guide said to me, um, do you understand about the grid? And I said, what, what, what grid? And they said, well, you and everyone who wears the stones are feeding the sacred grid. This is the grid of humanity and it, it's the grid that we all plug into and that we all share. And so, of course, during uh, a time like this, when we are in a situation where there's so much fear, so much anxiety, a lot of question marks about, um, you know, what we're going to be doing in the future and, you know, what our, our family is going to look like, how our children are moving through this very challenging time, and all of the energy of fear, anxiety, stress, depression, all of these things are going into the grid. And so, you know, about six months ago, I was getting a lot of feedback from clients saying, I don't understand it. I feel really good. But at the same time, I'm feeling really, really depleted energetically. And I'm feeling really sad, even though I'm really happy. And, you know, that is a direct result of being in that grid and picking up all of the feelings of all of the people who are going through these challenges. Um, you know, we charted to be here. And so we understand on a very, very intimate level um, that, you know, there are challenges, there's good times, there's challenging times, and we're just holding space. And so when we raise our frequency, when we wear the gem material, what we're doing is we're actually feeding the grid and we're helping to elevate the grid. And um, this is part of our sacred mission. So thank you so much for being part of this journey, for holding your part of the grid and for being conscious about what that looks like and really holding that space of um, elevating frequency for, for all here on this planet. One of the things that I wanted to share with you tonight, the guides have been really active with me in the last couple of weeks, as I was mentioning. And one of the things that they were talking about was that this whole period is really about a reset. So one of the most powerful ways that you can reset energy is by pattern interrupt. And many of you will understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. It's like, when you really want to change the energy, change your direction, what you want to do is you want to interrupt. So you want to basically shut everything down and then really think about what it is that you want to create in your life. What is it that you want to do? How do you want to create value in this world? And what do you think that is going to look like? And so you know, using this time of the great pattern interrupt, what I would recommend that you do is think about what it is that you would like to remove, what it is that's finished, old patterns that have already served their purpose, old energy that really, really needs to be put to bed. Um, and what energy would you like to carry? Would you like to carry forward? What is it that you really want to do? What is your sacred mission? How do you want to impact your world? And write those things down 
you know, do a release as far as what you want to release and then do a manifesting statement around what it is that you want to create and really move in that direction. Um, you know, we, we as the light workers, as the, as the star children, really have to kind of decide how we want to move forward in our lives, how we want to impact you know, our society. And um, of course, always in loving kindness and always with a positive uh, impact. So out of judgment and really in loving kindness, understanding that there's a lot of people that are struggling right now and a lot of people that are really um, you know, they're, they're worried, they're stressed, they're, there's a lot of anxiety, especially people that have children, that have children about their kids. So, you know, we are the ones that are feeling with the porch kind of right now. And we're the ones that are thinking, you know what, everything is going to be okay. We're going to be fine. And um, feeding that grid with the frequency of loving kindness, hope, inspiration, and sovereignty. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about sovereignty because this is another uh, really, really big energetic that came in about six months ago. One of the challenges that we've been experiencing in the last couple of years is feeling like we don't have sovereignty. We don't have the ability to choose how we want to feel, how we want to move forward in our life, how we want to impact our network, our families, our children. And sovereignty is one of the most sacred things that we, we carry as, as beings of light. We are sovereign. Our souls come from um, spirit and they are completely sovereign. And so when we embrace that idea of personal sovereignty, that we, it doesn't matter what happens to us. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. We always will have personal sovereignty, the ability to know that we are souls, that we have the ability to affect our own karma and that we are holding light. We're holding light frequency for the entire world. And when you understand that you have sovereignty, then there's a real, um, there's a personal power, there is um, a real um, humility that comes from that because uh, having personal sovereignty means that we're sentient beings, but it also means that we can affect others and that we can, we can really um, bring in the frequency of divine love, compassion, uh, loving kindness, and all of those things. So, um, you know, as a result of that, I did the sovereignty collection. Do you guys have any sovereignty? I'd like to share that stone with you. It's, it's a beautiful stone that resonates the golden ray. And so activating different, different rays is really, really empowering. And the golden ray is the ray of Jupiter. It's the ray of happiness. It's also the ray of personal sovereignty. So here it is. Personal sovereignty. This is a shapeshifter stone. It has a lot of the golden ray and also has the violet ray of transformation. So the violet ray is really important for transforming negative into positive and really dissolving anything that you feel is really uh, limiting you. It also is the ray that connects us with our divine path. So it really helps us understand what we're here to do and propels us onto that sacred path. Um, so I wanted to talk about being a spiritual warrior. So, you know, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> like, you know, all I can tell you is congratulations, we made it this far. So, you know, being a star child and charting for this journey. So I don't know if any of you have heard this story, but I'm going to tell it to you again, because it'll, it's, it's a super empowering uh, uh, part of our lore, part of our history. 
So 100 years ago, the Great White Brotherhood, uh, which is composed of Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, all the ascended masters, they got together and they were looking at the future and they were like, oh my God, like we got to get a team there, stat, because we are going to have a real big challenge in about a hundred years. So they sent the call out to the universe, to the star children, and they asked for star children to volunteer to come to earth to hold the frequency of love and light as we went through this very challenging time. And so all the star children started to re reply to the call and they lined up by the thousand. And, you know, the lore is that, you know, the star children are looking around and they're going, oh my God, did you see who's in line? Like, oh my God, we're in line with like one of the most ascended people, souls ever, and we're supposed to go with them. So, you know, everybody applied for the job and they, you know, we sold the, the council on it. It's like, well, you know, it's going to be really, really tough down there. It's going to be nasty. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be trying to, you know, basically destroy, you know, it's going to be nasty, nasty, nasty times. And we're like, no problem. We can do it. I can do this thing. No problem. I want to go. I'm part of the team. I can do it. And then we got here and we went, oh my God, I've been dropped off in the middle of the most nasty place in the universe. First of all, I don't know anything. I can't remember anything. I don't know who my friends are and who my friends are not. I don't know anything of all of my bodies of work. I can't remember any of it. And so I'm kind of down here and I feel a little bit separated right? Separated from my people, separated from my knowledge, separated from like my path. I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, are you sure? And so, you know, here we are as a unit and we have literally been dispersed around the world. So we've been scattered around the world because each one of us is like a beacon. We're a beacon of hope. We're a beacon of light. We're a beacon of love. And we're really here to embrace all of our brothers and sisters, but most of them can't remember. They can't remember that they're here to help. They can't remember. They're, they're kind of in like, um, like, you know, salvation mode. They're just trying to get by. They're trying to work it through and be okay, right? So, it's so very important that you understand how important what it is that you're doing here on earth and that, you know, working through life in divine love, carrying the frequency of the universe, which is all about non-judgment, loving kindness, and really believing in the future and believing that we're all going to be fine and and uh, feeding that into the grid is so very, very important. And so, you know, congratulations to every one of you people on this call. Um, you know, you have answered the call, you're doing your work. And um, I'm so grateful to be here with you. You know, I came into this business as a complete kind of, you know, it, it was just, by accident, really, you know, I was sick and I was wearing the wrong stones and I got sicker and sicker and sicker and, and almost lost my life. And then um, I had the opportunity to meet a, a gem dealer and got some different stones and realized that the stones that I had been wearing were actually making me sicker and depleting my frequency. And that was so obvious to me um, that when I went to my dad and said, dad, I figured it out. The stones were making me sick. And my dad is a psychiatrist. He said, well, congratulations on that revelation, but I hope that you're prepared to prove it. So I went on a five-year journey of study and, and really um, 
studying and researching what stones do and how they impact us as human beings and came out with the, with the system that we use today. And, uh, you know, any of you who are using the stones understand the profound difference it makes on the human body. I mean, we're vibrational beings. And when we use vibrational tools, what we're doing is elevating the frequency. And when we're in our highest vibration, then, you know, being happy and loving and kind and nurturing and hopeful and, and you know, contributing is much easier than when we're, you know, resonating a really low frequency and just trying to manage our state. I was talking to one of our staff today. We just hired a new, um, actually, she's going to be doing our social media, a really lovely girl. And um, I was explaining to her about the difference between, you know, life with gemstones and life without gemstones. And I, I was telling her about before I actually understood about vibrational gem tools. And I was in such a state of anxiety. And I used to sit on my bathtub in the morning and literally talk myself into being calm. So when, you're, when your uh, frequency is out of balance, you know, we spend all of our time trying to manage our state, trying to get back to feeling good. When we feel good and our, our vibration is humming, then it's effortlessly. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to try and manage our state. We're just humming like, like a finely tuned instrument. And yet when we're thrown off, when we go into anxiety or any of the lower um, frequencies, every ounce of strength goes towards basically trying to balance, trying to get back to that point of, of not having to manage it. And so that's really what the gem tools are all about. And so wearing gem material that's vibrating is one of the greatest gifts that you can give yourself and also um, the rest of humanity, because when you're vibrating at your highest vibration, then you're feeding the grid and you're elevating every single person that you interact with in a day. And it doesn't matter whether it's online or whether it's in, in person, you are contributing to the frequency of every person that you interact with. And that is a phenomenal, phenomenal gift. Um, it allows us to do our job. And, our, you know, as light workers, we came here to uplift our brothers and sisters. And so that's really what we're doing when we're wearing the gems. Managing your state is also about being conscious, right? About being conscious about the way we move through our life. And, you know, managing your state is, is not that easy. I remember when, you know, I was sick and when I was having a lot of anxiety, which a lot of star children have because the inside vibrates too fast for the human body. And so what ends up happening is a lot of times we're monitoring our state. We're kind of managing how we're feeling. And when you wear vibrational gem material and it elevates the frequency, all of a sudden, all that stuff just disappears. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And so we can do things um, that are expansive instead of contractive, right? So that's kind of exciting. I'm just going to leave that box and see you guys. Okay, um, I wanted, we were going to talk a little bit about Ashtar Command and what that is and who they are and how they impact us. And, you know, Ashtar Command is actually a group of galactics and they're the ones that sent their children here. And so we, you know, as star children are part of the Ashtar Command, we're here really to help to elevate the frequency. And you'll hear me talk about loving, loving kindness, love and light, all of these um, ideas. And really 
you know, when we, when we talk about the galactics, the galactics just want earth to be happy. They just, want to, this is the playground of the, of the galaxy. And this is where souls come to have fun. So it's like, you know, there's a huge investment as far as exactly, there's a huge investment as far as wanting to make sure that earth is, is moving forward in a healthy way. And that, you know, there's, there's still an earth to come to. And um, so the Ashtar command is very much about the galactics that are circling the earth. And we can connect with them just by knowing who they are. And, you know, they will support us and they do send us messages of hope and inspiration. And uh, resonating a higher frequency is imperative in order to be able to connect to them. Because the way I had it explained to me by my guides is like this. When we're depressed, when we're unhappy, when we're resonating a low frequency, it's kind of like getting stuck in the mud. So what happens is we can make some progress, but it doesn't matter what we do, we come out of the mud covered with mud. And so it's very, very difficult for us to actually affect others. And when we are elevating our frequency, then we almost float above the mud. We don't have to get down in the mire. We're the ones that are really guiding the ones that are in the mud to get out of the mud and we shower them off. So, you know, maintaining your frequency, really thinking about what it is that you want to create in this lifetime. What is it that makes your heart sing? And it doesn't have to be something that seems too big. It can be something as simple as making your children happy. It can be something as simple, simple as smiling at people that you don't know on the street so that they feel better. It could be something as simple as um, planting a beautiful garden that makes people happy every time they walk by it. So, you know, your impact in this world can be simply being you, making people happy, smiling at others. It doesn't have to be, you know, okay, well, I'm going to do blah, 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 blah. That seems like an impossible task. Simply being here, you're a lighthouse. You're a beacon of light that is, is here to ground the frequency of love so that everyone feels that they are nurtured and loved and accepted. And, you know, that's enough. You don't have to do more than that. I mean, some of you may have a big mission, which is about affecting a community or being a leader in one way or another. And that's wonderful too. That's a great, great blessing. And those of you who have a beautiful garden, who are creating value in different ways, that's also a great blessing. And so, you know, we're all here walking our path. And the most important thing is to manage our state and be aware of how we're feeling and to actually take action when we're not feeling great and taking responsibility and understanding that, yes, we are feeding that energetic grid. And so, you know, if you're not feeling great, then you need to change your stone and change your state. Because managing your state without vibrational material is a little bit challenging. I mean, I've done it. I, I, you know, being in really super high stress and going, oh my God, I feel terrible right now. And I don't know what to do about it. Maybe I'll meditate for 30 minutes. Okay, how do I feel now? Not so great. Do I need to meditate for another 30 minutes? Well, I mean, this can go on indefinitely, right? The beautiful thing about wearing vibrational gem tools, you put it on, it's vibrating energy. It's just like putting that egg beater in the egg whites. You are going to get meringue. It doesn't matter whether you believe in the meringue or whether you think it's going to be meringue, you are going to get meringue, period. So, you know, if you're feeling... Uh, if you're feeling feelings that you don't like and you want to be able to change your state, then, you know, talk to Leanne and Emily and find something that will help you change your vibration. Because when you change your vibration, 
you change everything. You change the way you feel, you change the way you move through your life, you change the way you interact with others, and you also change the way that people perceive you. And when you change people's perception of you, then you change their journey. Okay, think about the last time you were interacting with somebody who you thought was a little obnoxious, right? And you're like, wow, those people are a little obnoxious. I don't know if I want to interact with them. The whole thing is that when you're dealing with that energetic, then you come away having to negotiate through that. You've got to, one way or another, you have to negotiate through that feeling so that you can either set it aside or you know, get engulfed in it, right? So managing your state and being conscious of how you're vibrating and conscious about what you want to feel. How do I want to feel today? How do I want to interact with my world? And so using vibrational gem material, you know, when you place a vibrational gem tool on the body, what happens is the water in your body matches and mirrors the frequency of the gemstone. Think about somebody who's really successful. Think about what they look like when they walk down the street. Think about how they speak when they speak to you. Now, if you see that person walking down the street and they're, you know, having a great time, they're feeling successful, they're really excited about their lives. And then you think about that same person depressed the next day, they look completely different. And switching gears is as simple as placing different gem material on your body. How do I want to feel? How do I want to resonate my frequency and really taking responsibility for that? I wanted to talk really briefly about the difference between gold and silver. What's the difference when you wear gold uh, metal compared to when you wear silver metal compared to when you wear black rhodium, uh, black metal. And each one of those metals has a very unique signature. And so silver is all about the energy of the moon and divine feminine energy. It's very soft, it's very loving, it's very supportive, it's very feminine. When you put gold metal on the body, you're activating the energy of the sun. And so the sun is all about masculine energy. It's all about empowerment. It's all about Jupiter energy. It's about, you know, moving forward with confidence and, and you know, empowerment. And so gold and silver are really very different. They're like the yin and the yang of the, of the metal family. Now, rhodium, What's that? Somebody had something to say? No? <laughs> okay. So black rhodium was a metal that I introduced um, a few years ago. And this metal resonates 44 on the periodic table. And this is the energetic of the galactic warrior. One of the things that's really interesting is that a lot of the beings who are here right now have a lot of wind element. Wind element is very kind, very loving, very sweet vibration. These people are committed to making others happy and they're super hard on themselves. They tend to be big multitaskers, really great starters, not great finishers. And they are people who love to live in the upper chakras. That's where they feel comfortable. So grounding and being focused on time and on task are something that are a little elusive qualities, right? And when we place that black rhodium on the physical body, it's really fascinating because what happens is we activate the earth star chakra. And the earth star is really the, the one that connects us to mother earth. It's the ones that is the, the chakra that makes us feel like we we, we didn't turn right when we should have turned left and we ended up here. It's more like, oh, yes, I followed the map and I got to Earth and I'm here and I'm so excited. So what it does is it really bonds us with Mother Earth. Whenever we're, we're resonating a master frequency like 44, we're really activating um, mastery in our lives. 
It's all about really being conscious about what we want to do, what we want to create, how we want to move through our lives. So uh, the black rhodium is an incredibly powerful metal for um, any star children that feel a little disconnected from mother earth or anyone who needs a little bit more connection to, um, oh, thank you. There we are, the black rhodium. Anyone that wants to feel that connection with um, their earth star chakra grounding. I always say to um, all of the vibrational consultants, how do you ground the wind? I mean, it's impossible, right? When you ground the wind, if you try to ground the wind, then what happens is you get collapse. Like when you think about it, when the wind comes to meet the mountain, what happens? It drops, right? So frequency, um, maintaining frequency and wind element is imperative. We have to do it. These are the kindest, most noble souls. You know, they've, they've chosen this amazing frequency to live through their life. And it's always about being in service and always about, you know, um, big thinkers, be very creative. And so helping, helping them to be able to connect with their earth star chakra is such a great gift. There's a freedom in it. And it's something that um, allows them to be expansive like they are, but be connected to mother earth and, and this beautiful life that they've charted to live. So using the black rhodium is an amazing gift. The pink uh, gold, the rose gold plate is all about connecting with spirit. It's a very loving frequency. This is the frequency that is all about the heart. It's all about supporting the heart, connecting with your higher self, being more loving and kind to yourself. And it really is a very, very soft nurturing frequency. And you can see where we have it here on the Moldavite. Moldavite is that starborn stone of transformation. And this is a no nonsense kind of boot in the butt, you know, propelling you onto your sacred, sacred um, path. When we set it in the rose gold, it just makes it softer. It makes it more loving. It makes it more kind, right? So that's something that we're always really cognizant about. And all of these things from the metal to um, the style of cut that you, uh, that you decide on to the, um, the size of the stone, all of these things have a huge impact. And uh, when I first created the system, it was the clients that told me about this, you know, I was working with hundreds of clients at that time, and I was asking them for feedback and asking them to give me their, you know, what, what did they feel when they wore a smaller stone? What did, what did they feel when they wore a bigger piece? How did that affect the way that the frequency of the gem, gemstone impacted their life? And um, that's how we came up with a minimum of 10 carats for most stones. Um, some of the really high test stones like Alexandrite and Moissanite, we can get away with a much smaller stone, but this is how we, we came to the realization about, you know, what is the right size? What does it do when you wear a bigger stone? And uh, it was so funny. One of my clients uh, came to me and she said, big stone, big vibration. <laughs> I went, Yes, that's right. So, and, you know, I continue to use that from, from uh, then until now. And uh, the other one, another client said to me, well, this is where size matters. She was a lady that came to me. She bought a piece at a show and she came to me six months later to get her next piece. And she said, I'm so sad. And I'm like, why? And she said, I'm so devastated because I bought this little tiny piece and, you know, I love this stone so much and I wish I had a bigger one. She feel like, she said, I feel like I have a governor on my gas pedal. And um, she, she said, you know, I'm gonna have to replace this stone and it kind of makes me mad because when I was looking at them, I was looking at one that was a little bit bigger and that would have been so much better, right? So it's you guys that help me understand what size means, 
how size makes a difference. And when we're looking at mastery tools, when we're looking at tools to really change the way we feel and change our vibration, you know, this is where size matters. So, you know, as uh, I've heard Emily and Leanne say, go big or go home. Um, you know, I have my own size threshold. And when I go below that threshold, I feel like I'm not really getting the job done. Now for different frequencies, this can also change. Like, uh, you know, if you have a lot of wind element in your frequency, you can get away with a larger, with a smaller stone. Um, and, you know, the larger the stone, the bigger the frequency. And so, you know, the one thing when you're, when you're looking for your pieces, think about, you know, how am I going to feel about this piece in five years, in 10 years? Because these are stones that are going to continue to serve you throughout your life. Um, managing your state is a freedom. There's a freedom that comes with that. And so, uh, you know, being really conscious about getting tools that are going to serve you for your life is really, really important. Okay. I wanted to talk about layering. This is something that I'm asked about almost every day, um, you know, layering your pieces, you have all of these beautiful tools of light. And um, I have some clients that wear, uh, you know, four and five pieces and what is the right number, right? The most important thing when you're layering is that you realize that each one of these tools is doing a different job, right? It's kind of like your, um, you know, you're going to plant a garden and you're going to need a hoe and you're going to need a shovel and you're going to need a rake and you're going to need all of these different tools in order to create this beautiful garden. And certainly you wouldn't be digging at the same time that you're raking, right? So you want to think about what your tools are doing and then choose your layering pieces based on that. So for example, using an angel aura and a midnight mystic at the same time may not be the best use of, um, of those two materials because one is very much about, you know, the angelic frequency, raising the frequency and peace and loving kindness, peace, harmony, loving kindness, softness, confidence. And then the Midnight Mystic is really about organization and structure and stability and really trying to get a lot of things organized. And so those two stones are kind of going in opposite directions. The same would be true if you tried to wear an Angel Aura with a Pepperaccia. It's like, you know, you're trying to speed up and slow down at the same time. And so, you know, the one thing that I would ask for you to do is to be very conscious about your pieces. Remember that all of these stones are awakened by the Hindu high priest in a sacred ceremony in Bali, Indonesia. And so, you know, when the first time that we ever um, did a sacred ceremony for the awakening of the stone, I'll never forget the high priest said to me, you know that what we're doing is we're awakening the soul of the stone. And so these will become living beings of light. And I said, wow, that's great. <laughs> that's exactly what we want. And he said, well, the only thing is that once you awaken the soul of the stone, you have to do sacred ceremony for the stone. And I said, oh, okay. Well, we could definitely awaken the sacred pieces in the collection, but how do we awaken all the pieces in the collection? What if somebody doesn't do the sacred ceremony? And so I went back to see uh, my team that work in my production uh, area and in Bali and, and my production manager said, well, Ibu, we could just do the sacred ceremony ourselves. And I'm like, really? And there she's like, yes, I think we should talk to the high priest about that. I'm like, okay, good idea. So we went back and we talked to the high priest and we said, hey, what if we did the sacred ceremony for all the stones? And he said, oh, of course you can do that. So you never have to worry about doing the sacred ceremony for your stones. That ceremony is done on every full moon 
and every dark moon every single month. If you want to join in on that ceremony, you can by doing an offering of flowers, water, and incense. Um, you can certainly join in on that ceremony. And basically what the ceremony does is it really um, acknowledges and feeds the gem material as far as them contributing to your life and being part of your journey and really helping you to be the best version of you and really helping to, you know, slow down the negative thoughts, the negative impact and build the positive impact, impact and really take you into your best self. And so that's our goal. And um, so we found a way to do that with the, with the activation that's done, the blessing that's done every two weeks. And so we take um, offerings to the high priest, he blesses them, we bring them back to our temple that's in our office and we make that offering for every single stone that's uh, in our network. So we're really excited about that. So remember when you're choosing to wear more than one stone, you can absolutely do that. The stones love community. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of laying all your stones out together and it feels a little bit like a party, right? They're all like, oh, you know that's my buddy over there and we have fun together and you know we each do different things and we're so excited that we get to live with one another and you know we're just so they're always so up for whatever is up against them and so um you know bringing them out keeping them in community allowing them to kind of party together and then selecting the ones that you really need and I'm, I'm also a really, really big believer in talking to the stones, telling you, telling them what you need. You know, if you need something very special, like our lives today are so, you know, like we're on the road and we don't know where we're going and we don't know what's coming up against us, right? We just know that we're trying to do the best we can for our families and for all those that we love, right? And so... I always recommend carrying your stones with you. And if you get the sidewinder and you need to change vehicles, you can do that, right? And it's really about managing your state. It's like, oh, I just got a really weird phone call from somebody who's like flying off the handle. So what you do, you change your stone and you change your state rather than, you know, just trying to figure it out or having to go into the, you know, processing and, you know, dealing with all this stuff. When you change your frequency, you change your state. So really being in charge of your state and managing your state from moment to moment is super, super empowering. And remember, when you manage your state, you're also mitigating a lot of the challenges that you would bring into the family environment. I mean, we all have the bad day, right? It's like all of a sudden we get the sidewinder kind of smashes us off course. And then we're kind of trying to manage whatever it is that's going on. And, uh, and then we go home, right? And we walk in the front door and our spouse says to us, or our kids say to us, Oh, something bad happened with mom today, right? It's like, oh my God, clear the decks. Everybody heads for their room, right? So when we're able to change our state before we enter our home, we're really mitigating a lot of that energetic for our family. And I'm a big proponent of um, room gems because the room gems help our home to deal with all the challenges you know, as they come up so that we don't have to deal with the cleanup afterwards, the energetic cleanup. So I wanted to show you um, how I keep my stones. So, you know, I love energetic communities. So what I do is I keep all my stones together. And remember that when you take your stones off, you want to put them back in the clip lock bag. This, the reason is because um, sterling silver, everything that we make is set in sterling silver. It's sterling that's made the old fashioned way. 
Uh, all of our silversmiths, they mix the sterling by hand with copper and Italian alloys. And one of the things that happens when your stones are outside in, in the oxygen is we get oxidation. And oxidation is an interaction of oxygen with the silver and this causes the metal to oxidize. And that's what you see when you see tarnish. Oxidation doesn't happen from the inside out, from the outside in. It happens from the inside out. Kind of like the way rust comes out on a car. And so what we want to do, it doesn't happen when you're wearing the stone. It only happens when you take the jewelry off and place it on a counter. What happens is the oxygen interacts with the metal and then it causes this oxidation process. When you put it in your plastic clip lock bag, you're basically eliminating this. The oxygen can't get inside there. It can't interact with the metal. And so this, the, the metal stays pristine and your jewelry stays beautiful. And so um, it's, it's really important that you get in the habit of doing that. You know, every time I take a piece off, it goes right into the clip lock bag. And there's a couple of different types of clip lock that we have. We also have these clip lock bags. And so it's a zipper bag. You put your jewelry in there and basically that's sealing it off so it stays looking beautiful. And so all of these stones are stored together in their clip lock bags in this community. And in the bottom of the pouch, I have my cleaning and charging stones now. Oh, here they are. So these are the cleaning and charging stones. And so you have a selenite and the selenite is the vacuum cleaner. It helps to remove all of the negative emotion, all of the stuff that's been stuck in your stone after wearing it for a day. We actually had a lady on Facebook. She weighed her stone in the morning before she went to work and she weighed it when she got home. It was two grams heavier. Now for a little tiny pendant like this, two grams is a lot of weight. And so it's really, really imperative that you clean and charge your stone every day. And so my, my trick is to keep them in the pouch. The cleaning and charging stone is in here. They're all sitting together. They love it. And they're all ready to go. Um, at any time. So I can take anything out of this bag and put it on and it's ready to rock and roll. Um, the other thing that's really important, I have a small bag that I carry in my purse. And what I do in the morning, I, it's really funny because a lot of people will say, well, how do you know what you're going to wear on that day? And so you can think about what it is that you have planned for that day. And your guides will point out what it is that you need to wear. And one of the things I learned several years ago, I, had, I was preparing my little mini bag to take to work because I like to take at least two or three pieces so I can change if I need to. And um, so I had my citrine and they told me to take the Alexandrite and then they asked me to take a Moldavite. And I'm like, Moldavite, why do you want me to take the Moldavite today? And they're like, don't ask any questions, just take it. I'm like, okay. So I took the Moldavite with me reluctantly. I was a little resistant. I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm really feeling like I need golden rain. I need this and I need that. And so I took all those things and then they said, take the Moldavite. So I said, okay, I'm going to take it. I took the Moldavite. And after I did my third client, um, I had the vibrational consultant that was holding the event come up to me and say, we just got a call from someone whose son committed suicide yesterday and she really wants to come and see you. And then the guide said to me, put on your Moldavite. The reason why they wanted the Moldavite was because as soon as you put on the Moldavite, you're connected to galactic family. And you also, you know, can really hold space 
Moldavite is a stone that activates the earth star in a very unique way. It activates the earth star through the heart chakra. And so that was the perfect stone to be able to hold space for that woman who just lost her son. He, he took his own life and to be able to really navigate through that in the highest intention and the high, with, the, with the highest outcome. And um, so never ask why, just do what you're guided to do. And, you know, carrying extra stones so that you have an opportunity. And the more you open the door for your guides to be able to speak to you, when you understand that you are holding space for the world, for the people on the world, for your friends, for your family, when you, when you really understand that you are feeding the grid, then what happens is you're opening the door to your guides and angels for them to really help you understand the resonance that you need to be vibrating in order to do the best good. And um, even though I know that sounds like a little bit of a tall command, I think that um, everyone will have their own um, aha moment within that statement. Some of you are holding frequency for your family. Some of you are holding frequency for your community. Some of you are holding frequency for people around the world. Um, and so, you know, whatever that means to you, um, just embrace it and be grateful for the opportunity to be able to have such a, a wonderful impact. So, you know, layering your pieces, a lot of, a lot of you are probably wind. And so you may not want to show like three or four pieces um, to the world. And so you can certainly uh, wear them hidden. And so I often will wear a piece that's hidden. Keep in mind that the chakra column is, is really important when we come to actually manifesting frequency with our bodies. In order to be frequency, you have to wear it over the central chakra column. So anywhere over the chakra column, you can wear it as um, Alana is, is wearing on the third eye. This is absolutely stunning on you, Alana, I love it. Um, you can wear it on the throat, you can wear it on the heart, on, this, on the sacral chakra, on the solar plexus, on the root. You can wear it anywhere over the central column very successfully and you will be definitely um, managing frequency when you do that. Wearing it on your wrist, it is not frequency. You're only really working with the root chakra, incidental exposure, which means that when your wrist happens to go over the central column and the root chakra, then it's getting a little bit of juice, a little bit of frequency. Wearing rings is also really incidental exposure. So if we're really wanting to manage frequency, we must wear the stones over the central column. And so, you know, you can wear it on the third eye, you can wear it on the throat, you can wear it on the heart, you can wear it on the, on the solar plexus, wherever it feels right. And you can wear, you know, up to three. And if you're really pushing it for pieces and uh, make sure that they're in harmony with one another. Remember, you don't want to be, be playing, you know, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, salsa in one room and then you're playing a lullaby and at the same time just doesn't work, right? So you want to make sure that all of those stones can play together nicely and, uh, you know, do the job. Like, for example, you know, you want to get a lot of stuff done. You want to be super organized and you want to be motivated. You could wear a paparacha, a midnight mystic and a scapolite all at the same time. And that would be like a beautiful orchestra playing the tune of let's get her done smoothly in an organized fashion, right? So, you know, those would work really well together. Wearing a paparaccia that's like a Mars kind of let's get her done right now, 
with an angel aura, which is kind of like soft and loving and peaceful and kind is kind of like, you know, clashing a little bit. So make sure that your stones are harmonized with one another and that they play well together. And if you're, if you have any confusion at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to Leanne and Emily. They'd love to help you create vignettes of what you can wear together, as well as, um, you know, figuring out what maybe doesn't go so well together so that you can really get your orchestra kind of tuned and, and running well. Okay, rotating your pieces. You know, one of the things that happens when you start to build a toolkit, and, you know, we have clients that have 125 tools in their kit, and they wear every single one of those tools. You know, um, that's perfectly fine if you have five pieces in your toolkit or one piece in your toolkit. One thing that's really important is learning how to rotate your stones so that you don't get kind of stuck on one track and, and everybody else is kind of going like, oh, I want to come out and play with you for a while. So, you know, one of the things that I always recommend that you do if you do have uh, more than one stone is first of all, keep them in community so that they're all chatting with one another and so that they're all kind of harmonized with one another. And then at least once a week, if you have that opportunity, bring all your stones out and have a look. And what that does is it engages them because they're living beings. When they're not utilized, they tend to go to sleep. And so, you know, it's really important that you keep your stones kind of active and working and engaged. And so thinking about your stones and again, building your, your mini toolkit for the day is a really great way to utilize stones that maybe have been taking a back seat. And there are some times when you get a specific stone to deal with a certain situation. Um, you know, for example, say all of a sudden you lost your job and you're super freaked out or you're really upset or, you know, you need kind of some harmony and try and figure out how to move forward. So you might engage a certain stone to do that. And then when you get back in the swing and you've got a new job and you've got lots of things going on and so on, and you don't need help with managing anxiety and stress, maybe that stone is going to, you know, go to the back of the toolkit. But don't forget it, because that stone could come in really handy. Remember that what the stones are designed to do is they're, they're designed to help you manage your state. And so whether you're getting anxiety from maybe having to prepare a presentation to give between to all of your colleagues, or maybe it's about uh, you know, uh, managing your family and, you know, dealing with that situation. So you can use the stones for, you know, short increments to help you manage your state and manage whatever is happening in your life at that time. And if you find that you're just not attracted to wear the stone, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But do engage it, you know, every once in a while. It doesn't have to be once a week, could be once a month. Um, in order to keep that stone kind of resonating at its highest frequency and ready to go to work. You never know when you're going to need it, right? Um, the other thing I wanted to, to um, chat about, a lot of people lately have been asking me about earrings and what do earrings do and how do earrings enhance the frequency of the pendants that I'm wearing and what is the purpose of wearing gemstones on the ears? So one of the things that I found when I did my original research, oh, look at those babies. What I found when I did my original research is that when you add an earring in, what you're doing is pulling the frequency up. <coughs> Gem material, I'm just going to wet my whistle here. Gem material remember is a frequency tool and when we when we elevate the frequency up to the ears we're actually expanding the frequency we're lifting the frequency from the pendant up to our head 
And so this is a really wonderful way to lift up the vibration, to bring it higher. And the other thing that gemstones tend to do is they do have some protective qualities from EMFs. So they will help to, you know, a little bit offset the EMFs that we're getting from our phone and so on. They're also um, a really, really great way to sharpen our brain. Remember that when we're vibrating energy in this area, we're also helping to open the third eye. We're helping to draw that pendant energy up into the higher chakras so that we can uh, really enjoy that frequency at a higher level rather than just, you know, on the throat or on the heart. Those are paparaja. I love those. Those are really pretty. One of the things that when I first started doing this work, I realized very, very quickly was that faceting and the way that the stones are cut are imperative to being a frequency tool. And so um, that was one of the very first things that I did was I uh, started looking for cutters who would be able to facet the gem material for us. The higher the number of facets, the more the stone is going to vibrate. And so, you know, the faceting, the shape of the stone, all of these things play a really intimate role in the, the frequency of the stone. This is our Moonlight Mystic and emanating the Platinum Ray. You can see that Platinum energy coming out. Actually, I think it might be a Midnight Mystic. So we've got the Platinum Ray and we've got the Black Ray. And again, you know, my, my question was when I had all of these wonderful wind people coming forward saying, help, I need help grounding, what am I gonna do? And that was when this stone was born. And I really, um, I asked the Alchemy Lab to create a stone that contained the platinum ray and the black ray. So what we're doing is we're activating the highest resonance connecting to our higher self and then also activating that earth star chakra, helping to be more focused, be on time, be on task, feel empowered, feel like uh, we can focus on whatever it is that's in front of us. This is a really, really pretty piece. Now, I just want to explain to you when I, I designed that piece of jewelry. Can you just hold that up there again, Em? Um, so the Midnight Mystic set with a, um, it looks like it's probably a Dan Bright or Phoenix, a Moissanite. Yeah, so the Moissanite. When we combine black and white, what we're doing is we're really creating a very high harmony because we have the ultimate balance. And so the Moissanite activates the rainbow light body. And when we activate the rainbow light body, we're activating the highest elements of our soul and activating pure bliss for um, our soul. So when we combine the black and white, we're combining focus and expansion. And then uh, with the black rhodium, so this resonates the frequency of the galactic warrior, the preparedness, feeling like you're, you're absolutely ready to go and totally empowered in every way. This black rhodium resonates 44 on the periodic table, which is one of the paths of mastery. And so this piece is really all about that focused expansion and uh, feeling completely empowered in your life. Okay. I got Metatron bail. Oh, Matthew, <laughs> um, I was wondering, do you, uh, I, do you want to talk about the new um, titanium quartz? Yes. Oh, so Check this one out. Thing, you know, as a vibrational jeweler, I've had the, the great blessing of, of having these amazing cutters. And, you know, we've been adding cutters um, since we started working 20 years ago. And this, this is one of our Brazilian cutters who is a complete stone alchemist. I mean, he's a stone whisperer. It's amazing what he does. And 
Cutting rutilated quartz is one of the most challenging uh, projects as a cutter because you're dealing with material that's growing inside the stone and you're really trying to cut it so that you're getting the most uh, brilliance and the most beauty out of the material. So this particular cut is one of our, our most empowering cuts. This is a galactic cut and uh, we call it the priestess or the priest. And the reason is because it's a cut that was used in the time of Atlantis a lot. This is very, very, um, it echoes the frequency of the Palladians. So this is actually a Palladian uh, shape that is used everywhere in Pallades. And so when we wear this shape, it makes us feel like we're home and like we're on, on our path, like we're supported energetically. And so it is the pyramid energy. It is the energy of empowerment and the titanium rutilated is again, resonating 44 on the periodic table. It's all about empowerment. It's all about feeling completely empowered in every way. This is um, the platinum ray. And the platinum ray, again, is all about uh, the frequency of feminine energy. And whenever we engage the energy of femininity, we're in, engaging in the, in the energy of nurturing, loving kindness, feeling completely nurtured and loved in every way. And so this is um, a mastery stone. It activates Jupiter for success, abundance, joy, and health. And I'm, I'm a person that firmly believes that we should all activate Jupiter as much as we can because Jupiter is that lucky planet, that feel good, that empowered, that belief in yourself kind of frequency. Now, this looks like Amaterasu. Yeah. You know, when I, when I design, I've been a designer since I was 16 years old. I went to university for design and spent, spent most of my life as a designer. And um, I'm a third generation uh, kinesthetic uh, reader, I guess you'd call it. Um, I've been working with my guides and been aware of my guides since I was, you know, 12 years old. And when I started working with, um, with Japan, I do a lot of work. I have two beautiful vibrational stores that work with our jewelry in Japan. And as soon as I started working with them, Amaterasu started to talk to me. And um, I had no idea who Amaterasu was. And all of a sudden, my guides started saying to me, look up Amaterasu. I'm like, Amaterasu, what is that, right? So I Googled Amaterasu and all of a sudden I was greeted by the goddess of the sun, the Shinto goddess of the sun. And Amaterasu is one of the most empowering goddesses that you can work with. She believes in us, she supports us. She's been through all of the phases. She spent time in a, in a cave basically shutting out her life or her light um, because she was, um, you know, going against what they wanted her to do. And she was rebelling. And then all of a sudden she realized how much of an impact she had on the people of the world because all of a sudden all of, they took away the barrier to the cave and her light shone out and all the people rejoiced, right? And so if you want to engage in the energy of the sun, you can certainly call on Amaterasu. She will support you in divine loving kindness. She's a goddess that is all about um, supporting people on their journey. She will help you to create whatever it is that you can envision. And she's very, very much about uh, light and love and happiness and, and uh, really supporting you on your sacred journey. And uh, it has also the turquoise ray and the turquoise ray is that ray of the emotions. And so it really supports the emotional body 
and really helps us to move through challenges in a really, really easy, effortless way. So Amaterasu is an amazing, amazing goddess. And I invite you all to, to Google her and, and look up her story. She is um, such an empowering goddess. Uh, you know, I love to work with the energies of, of the goddesses and the gods because they were given to us for a reason to help us move through this life and feel empowered. So uh, one of the other uh, frequencies I wanted to talk about tonight was um, the green ray. I've been noticing lately that a lot of people are, are really drawn towards working with the green ray. We're talking about Byron Emerald um the uh vitality mystic the green hydro quartz this is the ray of wellness and healing it resonates to the energy of Kuan yin our divine mother of compassion uh green tara and archangel raphael and so this is the master healing ray so it really helps the physical body to revitalize itself. It's like the energy of summer and spring. It's that energy of growth, renewal, success, emotional well-being, and um, it's the ray of compassion. And so this is the ray that's really being being uh, put forward uh, now. And it, this is a stone, this particular piece has actually discontinued this cut. And so we have this on sale. Uh, and so it's a really great opportunity for someone to get an, an amazing piece. Um, so the green ray, if you're feeling like you need a little bit more energy, if you're feeling like you need to enhance compassion, if you need to really open the heart, Another thing about being a wind is that you take responsibility for everything, <laughs> literally for everything. And so one of the things that we really love to support is the heart chakra. It helps to keep that heart chakra clean and open. One of the things about taking responsibility for everything, winds tend to store a lot of old emotional debris in the heart chakra. And when we look at people that suffer from heart disease, lung issues, breathing issues, uh, breast issues, a lot of these issues are directly related to having too much congestion in the heart. And so, you know, keeping your heart clean with the green ray is a really, really empowering way to be able to achieve this. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is called Nirvana. And um, I created the stone as, um, as a tribute to those who are embracing their life and really striving to, um, to really achieve in, in their life. This, the bottom portion is the chartreuse ray that activates the crown chakra and the root. They unite in the eighth chakra, the soul star building. So what it does is it fuses the beginning and the end of the journey. And so it really helps you to remember what it is that you wanted to achieve in this lifetime and then propels you onto that with a, an amazing empowerment. And then on top, we have the green ray. And the green ray, of course, is all about empowerment, compassion, loving kindness, keeping the heart chakra clean, and really um, propelling that energy of spring, growth, expansion, renewal, success. And when you combine those two things, you're combining passion and compassion, and two of the greatest gifts that you can give yourself or anyone else is to really see them for their passion and understand them with compassion. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, frequency of empowerment and compassion. There was one other piece that uh, you guys wanted me to talk about. But... Okay, is that the Shasta? Yeah. yeah. So Shasta Pink Sapphire is really a stone that is remarkable. 
um, especially now, we're really working a lot with the violet ray and the violet ray is the ray of transformation. So what it does is it takes all of uh, the things that are the most challenging, all of the lower emotions, all of the, the feelings that um, really serve the past, but maybe not the present and the future. And so it dissolves all the old patterning and really um, transforms negative into positive and really helps to get rid of any old patterning that's not serving you anymore combined with that violent, violet pink ray. And that's all about, you know, vitality and wellness and love and really seeing yourself through the eyes of your soul. Um, one of the things that's important when we're talking about wind element is these are people who have charted to learn about humility in this lifetime and humility and confidence are on opposite ends of the spectrum. And so these are people that are always looking for a little more confidence. And so this is a stone that really gives you that confidence and allows you to move through your life with that belief that you can do it, that you're, you're empowered, that you're, you're going to push through and get her done, right? And this particular cut, again, has been retired. And so uh, this piece is also on sale. And uh, we have one left. So that's a piece that calls your name. Then you can call uh, Leanne and Emily and we can hook you up with that. OK, let me just see. So you know, one of the things that I'm 150% committed to and through our sacred network of vibrational consultants, we're all committed to helping you live your best life, to helping you achieve whatever it is that you charted in this lifetime. You know, the wonderful blessing is that before we came to this life, we had the opportunity to basically design our program like a movie. We enrolled all the people that we adore to play the good parts and the bad parts to push us and pull us through our lives and stretch us emotionally and help us get that degree, the university degree of life. And when you understand that this life is an incredibly orderly um, series of events that allows our soul to do the work that we charted to and also grow and learn and help others grow and learn, then it takes away a lot of the stress of this life, right? And when we understand that this is a charted journey and that, you know, it is absolutely perfect in every way for what our soul wanted to learn, even right down to your own signature, you chose this signature so that you would move through life in a very specific way. Somebody who's a wind earth moves through life in a very different way than someone who's a double fire. And so your frequency has been designed by you, for you, for your soul's growth. And so it's completely blessed on every level and you are perfect just the way you are. And so embrace it, know it, love it, and support it, you know, and the way that we support frequency is by using vibrational tools, right? So just like putting on your favorite dance tune in the morning before you get to, before you walk out the door, that is a frequency tool. You're setting your frequency, you're raising the vibration and you can pattern interrupt yourself with a piece of music or with um, a vibrational gem tool or with anything that creates frequency. So remember, when you wanna change your state, you have to pattern interrupt. And we can do that in many different ways. We can do that with singing bowls. We can do it with a piece of music. And the way that I dedicated my life to figuring out frequency and gemstones 
you know, I became a vibrational jeweler to help all of you manage your state. And one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself is buying a gem tool that resonates a frequency that supports your journey. Every time you place that vibrational gem material on your body, your frequency aligns with your mission, aligns with what, how you want to feel and empowers you to get your job done. It's kind of like when you learn to drive and you get your first car. It's like, yes, now I have a vehicle, right? I have a way to be able to, to navigate my life. And so, you know, it's my honor and my great privilege to be able to, to make the collections every season, to be able to provide you with vibrational gem material that supports you in your life. One of the things I wanted to talk briefly about um, this evening is um, kunsite and morganite. You know, as I've been uh, working with people from around the world and like you guys, I don't know if you've had this experience, but everything's become virtual, right? And so I'm doing events virtually and I know Leanne and, and Emily are doing a lot of virtual appointments. And this is a freedom and it is an incredible blessing that we have received during this whole period is that we are now able to trans, transcend time and space, right? And one of the things that I am most committed to is really um, helping people manage trauma. So, you know, being told that you have to stay in your home and that you're not allowed to, to leave and that you're basically your whole society is in jeopardy and that, you know, we've got this situation that's completely out of our control and, you know, that our, our livelihood is connected to, that our mental health is connected to, that our physical health is, is connected to, um, is a little bit, you know, challenging. Right. And so it's fascinating to me every time I make a new collection to see what the what the guides bring forward as far as what the people are going to need. And um, we were brought this amazing material of kunsite, morganite and spodumene, which is basically golden kunsite. All of these materials contain lithium. And lithium is a powerful drug that allows you to really manage out of control emotional states. Now, obviously wearing a lithium stone is very different than ingesting um, uh, medicine. It's very different, but also it has a lot of similarities. You know, when you're in a high state of fight or flight, or when you're in high anxiety, if you're in, uh, you know, some of the lower emotions like fear, anger, uh, terror, in the case of a lot of children, um, all of these states resonate a very, very low vibration. And it's very, very difficult to navigate out of the lower emotions without help, right? And that's why people get stuck. They get stuck in depression, they get stuck in in like miasms where they just can't seem to get out of it. And so when this material came forward, I was just so happy and I felt so blessed to be able to have this material for you. Um, these are both, Morganite and Kunsite are both stones of divine love. And what they do is they literally supercharge all the etheric chakras so that it creates a funnel effect. So literally what happens is we become a funnel for divine love. So that divine love from the universe pours into our physical body, lifting our, our spirit and cleansing the heart chakra and really elevating the frequency in divine love. And so both of those stones um, are in the collection, they're available, and they are magnificent frequencies. 
Um, one of the things that's really interesting about those both of those gem materials, when I first did my, my research on vibrational gem tools, part of that work was all about analyzing the stones and trying to figure out what the frequency of each gem was. There's been thousands of books written on gems and none of them, save one, talks about frequency, what the frequency of the stone is. And so one of the things that I did when I started to do this work is I had a group of 20 people, each one representing a different frequency combination. And I would test every single person to figure out what the frequency of the gemstone was. And what I found from my testing was that both Kunsite and Morganite re uh, resonate the frequency of storm. And a lot of people ask me, well, what is storm element? Storm element is the culmination of all of the frequencies wound together in one frequency. And so this is harmonized for every single signature. Everyone can wear these stones. And um, so Kunzite and Morganite are two stones. If you or someone that you love is struggling with um, something that needs to be shifted, trauma, anxiety, stress, you know, uh, broken heart, anything like that, those are, are the conditions that are elevated with Kunzite and Morganite. And um, they're amazing tools. The spodumene is a golden uh, kunzite, also sometimes called hiddenite. And this material also contains lithium, but it also has the activation of Jupiter. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, I think that everybody should be activating Jupiter all the time because Jupiter is the lucky planet. This is the yummy one. It's the one that activates success, abundance, joy, health, wishes coming true all around you. And so when we activate Jupiter, we're activating our highest path. And so spodumene helps to remove the lower emotions, helps to remove trauma and any of the lower emotional states and moves you into the frequency of happiness by activating Jupiter. Now I'd like to open the floor for uh, questions. If anybody has a question or something they would like me to speak to, I would love to do that for you. It's always such a pleasure and privilege to be with you all. And um, I'm so grateful for you being here with me tonight. And um, if you have anything that you'd like me to answer, you can either, I think, type it in the chat thing or you can, how would you like to do that, ladies? Oh, can, can I ask it? Hi, Mike. Hi. Um, how do you end up getting the energy, like um, for the Indigo Warriors, so to speak? How does that energy get into this? Because when I first got it, as I was putting it on, I started to feel the energy and it was going around my face like this and then right in my head and I started feeling prickles in my forehead. It's pretty right. Yeah, you know, that stone is such a special stone. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to talk about the indigo ray. So, you know, we star children, we came down, the reason they call us indigo children is because we came down to earth on the indigo ray. And if you look at a lot of indigo children, their auric field, they have a lot of indigo in their field. But the indigo ray is the magical ray that bridges the finite and the infinite. And so when we wear the indigo ray, what it does is it gives us a direct connect to the galaxy. And one of the things that's so fascinating about being an indigo child or being a star child, you know, we land on this planet and we kind of go like, oh my God, <laughs> I turned right when I should have turned left and I ended up here. And let me tell you, it's scary. 
So one of the things we often do as children is we gaze at the stars and like pray that we'll figure it out, right? And so what that stone does is it really connects us. It's kind of like getting a care package from home. So it really super connects us to our galactic family. And it also helps us integrate on planet Earth. So, you know, it helps to get rid of the feelings of, you know, I've been dropped off in this place and I'm you know, feel like I don't really belong here. I can't figure out what I'm doing here. So the indigo ray is the is one of the anti worry rays. First of all, it eliminates the because star children are notorious for getting into the worry cycle. You know, we hop into that worry cycle and we can't break out of it. And so the indigo ray interrupts that. There it is. And the other thing about this material is that this is an alchemy stone. When I first put the collection together and I found this material, I knew I had to include it in the collection. It took about eight years for me to, to discover why. I was, I was reading some material by a a wonderful, wonderful guy called James Tiburon. And if you can, look up some of his, his research. It's fascinating. This guy was a, an engineer. He was a petrol engineer. He was traveling all over the world. He went over to Peru and Metatron decided that he wanted to come through James Tiburon and James Tiburon being an engineer kind of went, I don't think so. <laughs> this is not okay with me. And kept coming back. So Metatron came back again. And he's like, I know you don't want to do this, but I'm really sorry because you are the chosen one. And so, yeah, back away because I'm coming through. So eventually he started to channel Metatron. And one of his channels is all about gem material in Atlantis and Lemuria. And he talks about how they infused precious metals into gem material to jack up the frequency. And it actually is what causes the, caused the de demise of Atlantis and Lemuria. They, they were the Palladians, give you the short abbreviated version. The Palladians were the ones that came down from the galaxy to form a uh, society here on earth. And they landed in Atlantis and Lemuria. They formed that community and they built these, they were still in a very high frequency light body. And so they weren't in bodies as we know them today. They were really, really high frequency. And so um, in order to keep jacking up the frequency, they built these fields and they were energetic fields that they ran energy through and they used them for everything from astro traveling uh, to communication. They used it to keep the frequency high for all the beings that were living in Atlantis and Lemuria. They used them for countless things. Anyways, so they needed to keep upping the ante as far as how much energy was running through that grid. And so they started to infuse the precious metals through the gemstones. And it ultimately caused the demise of Atlantis because they basically pumped so much energy through the grid that it collapsed. But using metal and on gem material really increases frequency. And for all of, the, all of the star children who are here, one of the biggest challenges is that here you have this star soul that's resonating like a little Ferrari, okay? And the human body is more like, you know, a Hummer, right? Or a Volkswagen. I mean, it's, it's a really low frequency. And this is one of the reasons why star children have allergies and food allergies and they've got autoimmune disorders and they've got all of these issues, right? Well, no kidding. I mean, you know, you take a high frequency being of light that lives on liquid chlorophyll and start putting cake and cookies into them. It's not a pretty picture, right? So, 
you know, when you understand about the frequency of a star child, and there's millions of us down here right now. So one of the keys is elevating that frequency of the human body to be more harmonized. And it's so interesting. And this is again, an excerpt by uh, James Tiburon. When we were, when we live in the galaxy, we live in gem material. You know, we have labradorite rooms and we have, you know, crystalline uh, rooms where the walls are crystals and the floor is crystal. And so, you know, it's, we're living in a very, very high frequency environment. And so here where we got gypsum and drywall all around us, you know, it's not exactly <laughs> feeding our frequency. So being united with the gem, gem material is just like this incredible gift from heaven that allows us to elevate our frequency. And, you know, the, the star children are these amazing conduits, right? Because we are super plugged into the grid, when we put that material on, now all of a sudden we're feeding a lot of different souls, not just our own physical body. So that was a great question, Mike. Thank you for that. Thanks. I think Michelle has a question. Yay. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi, Kate. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Really good. Thank you. Question, just to clarify, when the gemstones are, are like, is it every two weeks that you said that they're, they're blessed? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, is it all stones in your collection that are still with you or everyone that's wearing them as well? So the material itself is what gets blessed. So when I was at the, at the, the activation by the high priest, this was fascinating. And this is the way my team works. So we're at this, at this activation with the high priest and I'm standing there and all of a sudden my guides start yakking at me and they say, you know, all these stones are connected to the sacred grid. I'm like, okay, that sounds really cool. And he said, um, and they said, when, when you bless one stone, every stone that you have ever made is also being blessed. So the frequency is being elevated. When I left there and I went, I was going to Ashland, Oregon to do an event and I turned on the television and there was the grid. It was like, you know, one of those National Geographic shows and they had the selenite grid and they had these men and they looked like little tiny ants standing on top of these massive, massive uh, crystals, right? And my guide in, in my head said to me, see, there it is. That's the crystalline grid. And I went, okay, <laughs> I get it. That afternoon, I had a lady come by that's, that's, you know, like you guys, she's, I know her through the jewelry. And she said, I got a message last night for you. And it was all about the crystalline grid and how, important it is that everyone knows that they're feeding the grid and how important it was for me to know that every time the stones are blessed, that everyone in the network, every, every piece of jewelry that was ever made by us is receiving that blessing. And so, you know, I usually get it from two or three places, but that's how my team works. They'll tell me and then they show me. And then they give me proof of what it is. And so it's, it's fascinating how it works. But so to answer your question, um, what happens when the stone is blessed is that it is elevating the frequency. When you put that tool on your body, it elevates your frequency. And it also is feeding the grit. So when we talk about feeding the grid, it's you that's feeding the grid, not the stone. It's you, only a being, only a being of light can feed the grid. So through you wearing that stone, 
the energy that you are sending out into the grid is elevated. Thank you. Um, yes. Part two of the question is, what about the stones that you're not wearing that you just have in their little pouches hanging out together? Yeah, good question. So remember that every stone is awakened. So it is an awakened being. So when they're in the community, they are, they are still vibrating. They're still working with you. And this is one of the reasons why I started out early on saying, please engage your stones. Please bring them out, say hello, you know, keep them awake and aware, right? So it's kind of like when you have a room gem, it's very, very similar. You're not wearing that stone, but that stone is a living beacon of energy. It's, been, it's a, an awakened being of light. And so it's vibrating and every time you think about that stone. And even when you're not thinking about that stone, the stone is working with you. And we see this, we get reports of this. I can't even tell you the number of times in a year. And what happens, it's like when you lay a piece away. Say, you know, you wanted to buy two pieces and you buy one today and then you put another one on layaway. What ends up happening as soon as you lay that away, the stone starts to work with you. And it is remarkable, the number of people that come in and say like, wow, I didn't realize that when I laid that away that it was gonna actually start to work for me. So, you know, the stones are working with you when you have stones in your, in your, your group, as long as they're not asleep and they're awake and they're engaged, then they're gonna be working with you. Excellent, thank you so much. And then part three of the question. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> when it comes to owning a piece of Moldavite. Yes. That is not your collection. Yes. But someone else's, hmm. how do you discover how would one go about finding out the quality of it to know if it's actually, you know, it's ethically sourced and that sort of thing? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that's so fascinating, I could talk about Moldavite for two hours, no problem. Um, Moldavite is a very unique material and Mike, my business partner and I feel so blessed that very, very early on, there it is, very early on, we dialed into that material and we knew how important it was going to be. And so we have been buying as much Moldavite as we can um, over the last 20 years. And now today, basically the material is, is done, it's gone. Um, the, the Chulum, Mines are still producing a little bit, maybe 10% of what it was producing even three years ago. And so this material was sent by the Galactics for the star children that are here on Earth. And literally, this is one of the greatest blessing materials for a star child because it helps you integrate. And by integrating, I don't mean reducing frequency so we can live here. I'm talking about the opposite, integrating by elevating the frequency. And this is why we get side effects when we start wearing Moldavite. You know, there's two definite side effects you can get. The first one is the Moldavite headache, where you get like a headache from wearing the Moldavite. And, you know, we always recommend you take the material off for about 20 20 minutes, let your frequency stabilize and then re-engage it. And over two to three days, you can integrate with the Moldavite. Uh, we don't recommend that you push through because you will get a really, really bad headache. And it's simply from forcing your frequency up too quickly. The other one is the Moldavite rush. So you put the Moldavite on and all of a sudden you've got like a heat rush from, from foot to toe or head to toe 
And again, this is, this is very important that you give your body a break, you recognize you've increased frequency and that you stabilize by taking the piece off and then integrating it slowly over time. So when you look at Moldavite, there are the piece that, that they just show, that Emily just showed is actually called Bezaniche. And Bezaniche was um, a plot about the size of a football field in the Czech Republic that had a very unique soil texture. And when the meteorite fell in that area, it was very loamy, very sandy soil. Oh, there's another one. That's that's the, uh, I think that, hmm, that's, I can't tell from here. Anyways, so when the material fell on the Bezimici plot, it bounced off the silica sand and then fused with the silica sand and created this very textured, very highly textured material. And so that has an incredibly high frequency. The texture is called hedgehog. And so it's very high vibration, very good for star children. Uh, there it is. Now that piece right there is probably one of the most beautiful, perfect formations and they're very, very rare. You know, I had a client, sorry if we get off topic, but I had a client, she went to the Czech Republic to buy a piece of Moldavite because she loved it so much. And she came back to Spruce Meadows, ran into us at a show and said, oh my God, I never thought I'd be running into Moldavite in the middle of Calgary, right? But she couldn't find anything in the Czech Republic. So this is a beautiful, what they call a Moldavite flower. It's a disc. It's got that very, very textured, very uh, beautiful formation. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely stunning. This is the easiest of all the Moldavites for star children to wear because the frequency is very high. And of course, star children love high frequency, right? They like to live in a high, high frequency environment. The lower frequency material fell into riverbeds and got washed and washed and washed over the stones, over the, the riverbed. And so it doesn't have any anatomy, okay? It's flat material. And so this has a much denser frequency. And so star children sometimes will put that material on and go, mm, I don't think I like this, a little bit too low vibration. So always when I'm working with star children, I like to first of all, show them the different materials and show them what the different materials feel like on. And, um, you know, there's a, a, a thing out there in the big wide world that Moldavite is this, you know, plugged in, oh, you know, some people can't even get near it because it's too, you know, too high frequency, but for star children, this is like putting high test gasoline in your gas tank. It makes your, your motor run more efficiently. It makes you feel more comfortable living in the body. And it really is a stone that helps you to integrate on, on the planet more effectively. And um, the one thing that I would say to you, if you want a piece of Moldavite, don't wait. Um, in the last six months, like normally we would be able to buy, you know, kilos of material, no problem, but nobody's selling any of their material. The product has doubled again in the last six months and there's no end in sight because there's no more material. And so, um, you know, what I do when I, when I uh, have purchased the, the material, I always manufacture it and I sell it at the price that I paid for it. So you'll notice when you come in and look at Moldavite, you'll find some, some pieces that are a little bit less expensive and some pieces that are a lot more expensive. And when you're looking at the, the pieces that are a lot more expensive, it's because it's material that I bought recently. So, but it's an investment stone, you know, that material is just going to continue to accumulate value and it is a really, really invaluable tool for really helping you. It's like a cosmic boot on, in the butt. 
that propels you onto your sacred path with the force of a hurricane. Anything that's not serving you falls away and anything to serve your sacred journey is brought forward. This is like a flashing green light to your guides that you're ready to initiate your sacred path. So it keeps you grounded, keeps you shielded, keeps you engaged in your sacred path. And it really, really helps you to stay on course and, and really, you know, feel more grounded, more comfortable here on earth. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, Michelle. That was such a great question. Thank you so much. And I think we have one more question from Maria. Maria? Hi, Maria. You can unmute yourself here. I'll, you got it? Yeah. Oh, oh we can't hear you. Can't hear you. Nope, not yet. Do you want to type your question in? Okay. While she's doing that, I just want to thank you, Kate, for coming tonight and doing this for us. It's always a pleasure. Oh. And, and just, you know, uh, I'll speak for myself, but it just gives me <laughs> hope. And I just feel I can do this. I've got my community here when I see all these beautiful faces and these people doing their thing in their parts of the world. So mm -hmm. um, really love that we do this every three months and that we have a recording. So we'll have that for everyone. If you ever want to, you know, replay it and just reaffirm how amazing you are and that you are here on a mission and we all are and we're all in this together and we can do this and we've got these amazing tools to do it so thank you for bringing them to us oh it's such a such a privilege i'm i feel blessed every day to be with you and have you guys on this journey with me and to have all of you guys helping us to anchor the frequency with the gem material and uh you know anything that we can do to help you, you know, we really are uh, brothers and sisters and we're holding hands now and, and really uh, helping one another to, to do our, our work on this planet and to really, you know, hold the mission, hold the mission. And just remember that, you know, everything is on schedule. Everything is going well. So don't give up hope. Keep burning the candles because we are going to make it through this. And, you know, uh, it's such a great blessing to be part of the journey. So I've got this question to end off on. Um, so Maria says, wanted to know what gem do you use daily more than the other? Also, are you a sovereign woman? Oh, you also, this is a compliment, sorry. Also, you are a sovereign woman. Thank you for creating this line. Thank you so much. Um, my, you know, I'm a bit indulgent. I'm a double fire. So I pretty much have to use fire to feel comfortable in the body. And so my go-to stone, I have like four of them. It's by, by confession. Um, I use citrine a lot and um, all of the, the Jupiter stones. So um, probably my two favorite absolute love, 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 and grateful to have every day um, are the citrine. And as I mentioned, I have three of them, four of them. I have a light citrine. I have a very dark kind of cognac citrine. And then I have two this color because I love it. And then <laughs> the other stone, the other stone that I really adore is by is um, uh, Golden Barrel. So I really splurged about, oh, geez, it's got to be about six years ago. And I, I got myself this barrel. And what barrel does is it feeds the feeder. So it allows me to nurture myself while nurturing, you know, all of the stones and all of the people on our planet. And uh, it's a mission that I take very, very seriously because I know how important it is that we utilize every second we have on this planet. Not used to being here, but it's really important right now that we are focused 
that we're on time and that we're on task. And so that's one of the stones that I use in order to feel good, even though I'm running 350 miles an hour as I, you know, work with everyone around the world to try and manage our state collectively, right? Um, I also adore the rutilated quartz. Um, rutilated quartz, again, is another Jupiter stone. It's a master manifester. You program the stone and it turbocharges the manifesting. I'll show you my piece here. It's with the dragon. I absolutely adore working with dragon energy. Um, so that's my rutilated quartz. It's not flashing for us. Um, and I don't have the light set up properly here, but the rutilated quartz, again, is a stone that lights up the frequency. So, you know, most of us are burning the candle at both ends, even through this lockdown period. You know, we've got a lot of work to do. That's an amazing piece. Um, and what it does is it downloads really, really high levels of light. And so all of the cells start vibrating on that material. And then on top of the Jupiter aspects and the manifesting aspects, it's a stone that I just love, 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 love. <laughs> There's I love it too. <laughs> and it's hard to see. But I mean, citrine, anybody who knows me, who sees me, knows that I love citrine. And the reason is because I used to experience so much anxiety being that double fire on top of being a star child, you know, it helps me to keep my state vibrating at a high resonance. Okay, we do have one final question. I didn't realize Nina had her hand up. Nina, you can ask the question. Yeah, um, I was just wondering if uh, earrings are also considered to be on the central column or if they're off of that area. No, earrings are not on the central column. They're definitely kind of off, right? They're close to the throat chakra. Central column literally runs down the center of your being, right? So, but what happens when you wear earrings and you're wearing a pendant is you're drawing up the frequency uh, from the central column. So you're drawing it up, helps with the ears, helps with protecting against EMF, and uh, you can bring in a different frequency when you wear them. So say, for example, I was wearing my citrine, I could wear imperial pink on my ears and that would integrate the pink ray, right? So it's kind of another way that we can bring in another frequency and integrate that into the mix. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else have a question or was that anybody? Okay, well, I think that's it. Thank you so much, Kate. You're such an inspiration and a motivation. I'm going to go talk to my pendants tonight. going to get a party <laughs> out going on. Yeah, because I've done Don't that. Don't be afraid to ask them, okay? You can say to them, hey, listen, I need some help with da-da-da-da-da, right? Mm -hmm. And just tell them what you need. Um, when you tell them what you need, you're also talking to your sacred team, right? The one thing that I think is really important for you to know is that yes, you're here living a human life, but you have this phenomenal team with you. You have your, your, uh, your soul uh, person that takes care of you, your, your guide that walks with you from birth to death. And then you have your specialists that will come in when you need help, when you're elevating to a different uh, path in this lifetime and you need, need extra help. Uh, you get a, a, a new members of your team coming in. And then, you know, one of the things as a, as a medium that I get all the time is that you have your ancestors with you. You have the grandfather that adored you. You have the grandmother that adored you, the great uncle, the mother, the father, the brother, the sister that's on the other side. Remember, they just transformed to a different frequency and they are your team, they adore you and they're rooting for you and they're cheering you on and they want to help you. 
So ask for what you need. They can't help us unless we ask. And then wear your stones, know you can do it, believe in yourself. You are these amazing beings of light on this mission. And you know, it's up to us. And when we all hold hands, we all elevate one another and believe in each other and you know, try and live the, the principles of compassion, loving kindness, you know, being compassionate with our fellow men and women is so important, especially now because we're in this incredibly polarized situation where everybody believes they are the one that knows the answer to everything. And so, you know, being compassionate and loving and really listening and, you know, agreeing to disagree if you don't agree, but giving them their ability to, to um, you know, believe in what they believe in and just trying to hold that loving kindness and compassion and a belief that we can do it is so important. Thank you so, so very much for being here. It was so nice to see you. I send you all the love and gratitude of all of the masters and all of the ones that are cheering you on and know that you have help. Whenever you need it, you got it. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Thanks Kate. Thanks, everybody. Mm. Have a beautiful night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Enjoy.